Hello, little man. Boy, I sure heard a bunch about you. See, I was a good friend of your dad's. We were in that Hanoi pit of hell together over five years. Hopefully, you'll never have to experience this yourself, but when two men are in a situation like me and your dad were for as long as we were, you take on certain responsibilities of the other. If it had been me who'd not made it, Major Coolidge would be talking right now to my son, Jim. The way it turned out, I'm talking to you, Butch. I got something for you. This watch I got here was first purchased by your great-grandfather during the First World War. It was bought from a little general store in Knoxville, Tennessee. Made by the first company to ever make wristwatches. Up till then, people just carried around pocket watches. It was bought by Private Doughboy Ryan Coolidge on the day he set sail for Paris. This was your great-grandfather's war watch, and he wore it every day he was in that war. When he done his duty, he came home to your great grandmother. He took off the watch, put it in an old coffee can, and in that can it stayed until your granddad, Dane Coolidge, was called upon to go overseas and fight the Germans once again. This time they called it World War II. Your great grandfather gave your granddad this watch for good luck. Unfortunately, Dane's luck wasn't as good as his old man. Dane was a Marine, and he was killed, along with all the other Marines, at the Battle of Wake Island. Granddad was facing death. He knew it. None of those boys had any illusions about getting off that island alive, so, three days before the Japanese took the island, he asked the gunner on an Air Force transport named Wanaki, a man he'd never even met before in his life, to deliver to his infant son, who he'd never seen in the flesh, his gold watch. Three days later, your granddad was dead. But Bonaki kept his word. After the war was over, he paid a visit to your grandmother, delivering to your infant father his dad's gold watch. This watch. This watch was on your daddy's wrist when he was shot down over Hanoi was captured, taken to a Vietnamese prison camp. Now he knew if the gooks ever saw the watch that they'd confiscate it, take it away. The way your dad saw it, this was your birthright. He'd be damned if any slope was going to put his greasy yellow hands on your boy's birthright. So, he hid it. In the one place he knew he could hide some, his ass. Five long years he wore this watch, up his ass. Then, he died of dysentery. He gave me the watch. I hit this uncomfortable hunk of metal up my ass for two years. Then, after seven years, I was sent home to my family. And now, little man, I give the watch to you. <laughs>